Morning, everybody. I'm Vincent Mazda. This is Listings to Leads. And today we're talking about Facebook and Google. These are two of the most important websites on the internet. There's a, Google is the number one website on the internet. A lot of people go there looking for answers. And we definitely have ways to help you get business from that platform. And a lot of people spend a ton of time on Facebook. It's the number three website in the country. Um, and we have been very successful capturing both buyer leads and seller leads from that platform since they launched advertising. So let's get into it. I, I did ask right before we started the, the call here, what are you looking for as agents? If you want to, you can put it in the panel. If you're looking, if you're more interested in buyers or if you're more interested in getting sellers. I'll just tell you this, since mortgage rates have gone up and over the past year, a lot of people are very interested in getting buyers, right? August, there are a lot of agents that are out there that want more listings and we're definitely going to dive into that. But the simplest way to get buyer leads is to get a listing in your account and run an ad on it. And so let's walk through that. So if you're new to us and you have your own listings, your listing should auto populate to this page here. And it should be sitting here like the addresses that you see on this page. And from here you can run an ad, right? So if I've got a listing here that's active, you just click market listing. Now, when you go here, there's all kinds of things. You can see a list of all the tools that we're creating automatically. But right here, we have uh, Facebook and Instagram as the very first action that you can do. And let me pause this stuff here. So the, the first step when you do setting is, is you connect your social media account. So if you can see here, the ad preview says real estate test, that's our testing account. Yours, when you've connected your Facebook, you're going to see your Facebook business page right here. So when you go to your property and click market listing, the first thing we're showing you is create a Facebook ad. So you click here and all you have to do to create the ad is click that green button there that says create the ad. Okay. It will be a $35 ad. It will run for seven days. It will have a minimum of 15 mile radius wrapped around where the city is inside. And that's how it works. If you want to customize this, you can click in the text before you submit the ad and you could maybe write something there that you think is very important, right? Um, it can't, it can't spell schools. Um, anyway, as you do that, everybody's going to see that and that's what the ad's going to look like and create that. When you create that, it shows up on Facebook and. Facebook will want to review it and they'll tell you it'll be approved soon. And let's just go look at that. So Facebook, this is in the center of this page is the newsfeed and these ads that we're creating show up right here. And, and it's an important place because everybody is here looking at their friends and what they're eating and where they're traveling and all that stuff. And your ad just shows up right there. And what people see it, they can click on it. Right. And when they click on it, the actual response looks something like this. It's like a little window pops up and it's the, looks like a chat panel. It says, would you like this information? And there's really only one answer. It's yes. And, but their name and email and phone number is pre-populated in the form from their profile. And we all need an accurate phone number and email address just to access our own account. So these leads come up with pretty accurate information and that's what our clients really like. And so one thing about running it out of this one is for a home that's for sale. It's designed to get buyer leads. It's going to get name, email, and phone number pre-populated from the Facebook profiles. And on average, these leads cost $3 each. You know, some parts of the country, they're more and some parts of the country, they're less, but around three bucks. So if we're running a $35 ad, like which is our default setting here, and you divide that by three, that's about 11, maybe 12 leads that you should expect from a seven day ad. If you've got a, 
a really exceptional listing, right? And for instance, there are a lot of places where the average price of a home is like 400 grand, but somehow you come onto a hundred plus dollar listing, you might want to tell more people about. And that's when you want to start to think, do I want more people to know, like maybe 30 miles away that I handle this kind of property. And if I want more leads, you might want to increase that budget to a hundred dollars or, or $50 or something like that. And then you'll notice that it will automatically, well, I didn't click on advanced options. I think my mouse did it. You don't need to click on advanced options, but if you do. You'll notice that if your Instagram account is connected, it will be there too. And there's some other fun stuff that you don't really need to know, but that's what it is. Okay. So let's see if I see some questions here. Let's get there. Is there something to see here? I only hear audio. Yeah. Is everybody seeing my screen? I think everybody's looking at it. Crystal, can you not see anything here? Okay. So what about everybody else? Sorry, Crystal, not seeing anything. Can anybody? Okay. Everybody seems to see the screen. All right. Crystal, and maybe you're looking at the wrong little window or maybe you should log out and log back in. Okay. Let's keep going. So that is how you run an ad to get a buyer on Facebook. And just so that we understand each other, there are lots of ways to get buyer leads. Some of them are free and some of them are ads, right? Wow. But I think the fastest, cheapest, and easiest way to get buyer leads is by doing exactly what I just showed you here, which is get a listing in your account and run an ad on it. Okay. The, I'll show you some other ways to get buyer leads. They just cost more and they're not as effective, right? If you want buyer leads, marketing a home is the fastest way to get buyer leads. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, and I want to go over to this page now. Let's see here. Okay. That's listings. You can, a lot of you don't have listings right now. So if you can borrow a listing, maybe from your office or from a colleague, you can then click this button that says grab active listing, drop in the zip code and the MLS ID and just grab it. Right. And then all the tools that we create or created for you, and then you can run an ad on that property very quickly. Those leads will come to you. It's all good. Just right off the bat to get buyers running an ad on Facebook is the simplest, easiest way. Let's go over to ads page now and then walk through the other things we can do with, with Facebook. And I think I'm going to go down the path of just how to get more buyers. So. If we go look at landing pages, we create a lot of landing pages, right? You get three kind of by default and you'll get a free home value page. You'll get a, what is your home worth landing page? And let's see if this is going to be just a jerk. Two. And you get a new construction landing. See if we can make this thing work. Yeah. These are the default ones, down payer assistance and new construct. Now you can create all kinds of landing pages, property value equation plus or instant home value landing. You should actually have one of those for every farm market that you you've got. You can create them on the landing page section. We have a iBuyer landing page. We have a FISBO landing page, buyer listings, all these kinds of landing pages that are, you might want to use, but Let's just do new construction. A lot of you have new construction in your area. We're using lead ads. That means we get pre-populated name, email, and phone number, and we click create ad. So if you go to the landing page section, you're going to know that you're going to see that landing page is already created and it's sitting there and that kind of work, right? You will need to type in the name of the town that you're working in. So whatever, whatever town you, you you're at. In, you just type in the name and you publish $35 in seven days. Now, I'm not exactly sure the cost of leads on this kind of thing. They could be a little bit higher. They could be a little bit lower. 
it won't say first time home buyer here. Our guys are kind of testing things, so it won't. It, it it may or may not say that, but there's basically a report that you can download, and so it's saying, hey, get that report. Yeah. So that's what you can do if you want to do a new construction kind of ad. Now, another thing that you should think about if new construction is in your area is that you can actually customize this all before you even get here to talk about a particular development. I know in our area, for instance, there are a fair amount of new construction projects. And if you're in the area, you start to get familiar with the names of those, right? There's big signage out front and you know that it's going to be a few years where they're building this stuff out. And so you can actually tailor your landing page to just talk about a particular development, or you can create custom landing pages to talk about those developments and then have different ads running at different times. And so that's another way of getting buyer leads as well is just talking about the new construction projects that are out there. There was a landing page for first time home buyers, and that's the same sort of thing. You choose the landing page that you want. The ad is pre-written. I didn't mention it, but as you can see when I'm showing you the ads, and I mentioned that kind of $35 budget, that is our default setting for any ad that is designed to get buyer leads. And as I mentioned earlier, buyer leads cost about three bucks. So you can expect 10, 12 leads when you're doing that. Now, another kind of ad that you can run on Facebook is a PDF guide ad. Now you may not know this, but we have 80 PDF guides already written you as the agent are branded on every page of every guy right so your logo is there your pictures there your number and you can decide to run an ad for buyers there are 40 different topics or you can run an ad for sellers and there are 40 different topics there as well let's just say you want to talk about avoiding foreclosure i've talked to a few people recently and they're saying yeah foreclosure you're coming in our market and we want to get in front of that, right? This is a good way of doing that. You choose the PDF guide that you want. You click create an ad. And of course it writes the ad. And so all you have to do to target is just say, type in the name of the, of the town where you want to focus. This has a wider, everything starts with a minimum 15 mile radius. If you're in an area where you drive more than 15 miles, like maybe 30 miles where you can expand that. And then everybody in that area is going to see that, right? The thing about this one though, is that this is not a lead. This is not an ad looking for home buyers. It's looking for home sellers. And you know, I, that I've been mentioning that a, a buyer lead on Facebook costs $3 each. And so since you're running a a, a $35 ad, you can expect about 11 leads, right? Seller leads cost more than buyer leads and Facebook makes that decision. And often when you're running an ad looking for seller leads on Facebook and you're using a PDF guide, those leads will cost around $10 each. And that's because Facebook recognizes that a listing is more important to you than a buyer. Here, we've got a $50 ad, seven days long. If they're charging you 10 bucks per lead, you can expect five leads, right? And just so you know, if this ad, let's say you run this ad and you get five leads in two days. At that point, the ad's just going to stop being, it's going to stop showing because you've spent all the money, right? You got the leads because we emailed them to you directly. If you connected your CRM on your profile, we would send those leads to your pro to your CRM as well. Um, but when the money runs out, Facebook will tell you it's run out and say, would you like to add more budget? And then you can decide then that you want to add more money or you don't. Um, but that is how you would run an ad for a PDF guide. And as I mentioned, we've got them for buyers and we've got them for sellers. So you don't really need a listing to get leads. But you've got 40 different ways, or you've got 80 different ways to get listings with PDF guides. And then of course, you've got unlimited landing pages that you can create, right? So I want to tell you, oh, I see a question here. Let's answer that first. The question is any feedback on what, get, any feedback on what gets the most amount of leads? No, 
not really. We, we just keep hearing that people are getting lead, but we haven't been able to collate, which is the most, and really it's hard to do when you have 80 different PDF guides because we're not seeing, oh, this is the number one lead gen. Let's wrap up a Facebook part of the thing here. Really? Let's talk about one more thing. When we're looking for seller leads, if you run an ad on a property that's sold, right? And you can even be helping the buyer buy the home and the home is sold. If you market a home that's sold, those leads cost around $7 each. Okay. So when I said earlier that a buyer lead costs three, that's because it's a buyer lead. So Facebook is saying when you're marketing home that's sold and you're looking for listing leads, we're going to charge you more per lead. So when we do that, it's going to be a $50 ad because anytime we're running an ad that's designed to get listing leads, the default setting is 50 bucks. And you're going to get leads for around $7, right? But if you run an ad on a home that is pending or under contract, Facebook doesn't quite know what to do, right? They, I don't know how they're even setting the price if it's a person that's looking at it or if it's software that's looking at it. But what we're seeing is that when you run an ad on a home that is either pending or under contract or active contender, these leads cost around $2 and 50 cents. Okay. So now if you spend $50 and your lead costs $2 and 50 cents, you're going to end up with 20 leads. Now, I just think a lot of agents are, can't do that. Right. They can't run that kind of ad because their MLS doesn't allow it, or maybe their local rules don't allow it. And then other agents, they're just not comfortable doing that. Right. But there are certainly a lot of agents who are like, I want to build a database of people who are thinking of selling their home. And I am absolutely going to be doing it. And so this is the cheapest way of getting lead. And you can even customize this right now. I wouldn't do it when it's pending, but you might say, Hey, we can take more offer, right? Or you might just say, we have a lot of buyers still looking and, and this is under contract. So not only can you get your free own value, but we've got buyers who are actively trying to buy right now. So that can like make these kinds of ads work a little bit better. I'm going to go through, and give you an example of what you should be thinking, especially what, what I'm showing you here, how to create an ad on let's just say a sold property, Lord have mercy. Excuse me. I'm going to refresh this page. If you just do, if you're running it out on a sold property, I think and on a pending, maybe not as much. You need to customize it. The default setting is not always so catchy that it work, that it works. Okay. When you go create an ad on a property for a buyer, it almost 100% of the time works. Well, why is that? Probably because inventory is really tight and you've got a home for sale, right? And people are sitting on Facebook and it's, wow, okay, I get it. I, I need to go look at that. But when a home is sold and I've got one here that's sold, let's just look at it. That the language just says, Hey, this home is sold. It's in this town that's going to affect your home value. And that is okay. That's accurate, right here. This home is sold and that's going to affect your home value. And so get your free home value. This makes sense, but it may not be as compelling, right? I might look at it and glance it and go, okay, interesting. But if you are able to say, Hey, this home is sold and we got it in contract in seven days, which used to be the case. People would say, Hey, we're in contract in 48 hours. Um, but let's just say one week or we sold above asking and you can tell them how much you sold it above asking or 10 offers, right? These are like important data points that will help people respond to your ad more. And so you want to think about if that applies. Okay. And just as a reminder, it's a $50 ad and these kinds of leads cost around seven bucks each. So 
that's the ads that you can run for sellers on Facebook. But I do want to wrap up one concept because you're hearing me talk about cost per lead, right? So when you're running an ad for buyers, the cost per lead on Facebook is $3 each. When you're running an ad on a listing that's sold, getting seller leads, a cost per lead is about $7 each. If you're running an ad on a home that is pending or under contract, that can be around $2.50, again, for seller lead, which is the cheapest way to get a seller lead is running an ad on that, the property that's under contract or something. Then you can do landing pages and you can do PDF guides. We, we look at the PDF guides here and those leads can cost around $10 each. Same $50 ad, it's just the lead cost more. Let's talk about landing pages. You can create your own landing page for every one of your farm markets, right? So if I click create an ad and I've got a, I've got a landing page for Sacramento and let's just see how it looks. These are these kinds of ads have been around for at least 10 years, right? There are all kinds of companies have home valuation landing pages, and many companies allow you to run an ad on them. And, and we've been doing this for a while. So, what that has done is that's really taught Facebook that agents really love this kind of ad and they will pay a lot of money for these leads. When we create a landing page, it could be any town you want, right? It could be I don't know, Memphis, Tennessee, right? So you have a little picture of Memphis in the back. You type in Memphis over here. I'm not going to type in Memphis. Because this one is for Sacramento, California. And boom, you click publish and it goes out looking like that. I'm going to do a different area. I'm going to do a different one. We're going to stop. But just so you know, if you publish this, these leads are often charged at $15 each. So that means that if you spend $50 and you're getting leads of the amount of phone number, you're only going to get about three, right? So what I'm trying to describe here is there are multiple ways of getting listing leads, but the cost per lead is different. But if you're putting a straight kind of message, Hey, you click here to get your phone the back. Who's going to click on that? People who are really interested in that. So you can think of it as what's a higher quality lead and what's my cost per lead. I'm going to see if I can find another landing page because depending on where you are, yeah, this one will work. Let's do pleasant. But depending on where you are, this kind of home valuation landing page can be ineffective. It cannot work. It can take your money and not get you the results that you want. And so we got to talk about what's going on and why is that not working and what's the workaround. You may not know Pleasanton and it's cool little town, but it's in a town, it's in an area where there are a lot of towns around. And you notice here that we cannot tighten the radius. Had we been chatting about this five years ago, you could say, hey, I want to target only people who own a home in Pleasanton. Those are the only people I want to see this at. But you can't do that anymore in, in the default way that Facebook works. So it can make these ads completely useless. Unfortunately, a lot of our clients don't take this class and they don't know that. And they go out and waste their money and they don't know why that's not working. And I'm, I'm grateful that you're here because I'm going to explain to you why this doesn't work for a lot of people. Now, I don't know if, I, I don't know where you're sitting, but if you're in a dense area, like this is in Northern California, and I guarantee you this place fairly dense, right? There's cities all over the place, but this little area in the center of the map is pleasant right? Right here. It's not that big. And right over here is Dublin and right over here is Livermore. And then there's these cool towns over here in center Road. And when you run an ad, it's going to be sprayed all over those towns. I mean, everybody in this map and even a few more are going to see this ad, but you're really only trying to target people who own a home right here. So that's the first problem of Facebook is that 
your ability to target people who own a home in that area is severely limited. And that gets us to this concept down here, which is retarget current leads or custom audiences. And you could actually have a list, and I'm going to show you where to create that, of homeowners and pleasant, right? Now, we don't have that list created, but if you if you turn on our custom audience stuff, you'll be able to, hey, what did I just do? Sorry. You'll be able to, to create a custom audience. And if you're going to be in this for a while, plus five years, if you intend to be in real estate for a while, I highly recommend you get the lists of homeowners and you create custom audiences for every one of your farm markets. Okay. You can buy that from companies like Remind and I think HomeSnap and there are other companies where you're getting their name, address, email, phone number, and then you create a custom audience and it lives in your Facebook. So even if you decide, hey, I'm tired of these guys at listings to lead, I'm going to go and just do my own stuff. Your custom audiences will live in your Facebook attic. And then when you're running an ad that's relevant for a homeowner in your, in these areas, you can target these people. We of course make it very easy. If you try to do create a custom audience or target in Facebook, it's actually really messy and complicated. But here, if I go to our ad section, let's go look at it. You can actually create a custom audience and let's walk through and look at that together. Give me a second while that page cooks up. I have a sip of coffee. Oh, let's take you forever. So right here, when you come to this page, the first time it, it's going to ask you, this is our ad page. It's going to say connect to Facebook. And then you connect to Facebook. And I don't know if you can see that there's like kind of a blue box here and there's a green one here. You will also see a yellow box. And it will say, click here to turn on custom audiences, right? And you click that, it'll take you to Facebook. There's this long page of rules. And at the very top, it says, accept, click that. And then come back to this page and refresh it. And then it will say, turn on retard. And once you've done that, the yellow box will disappear. And it will then say, here's what you got. That gives you the ability to use this button that says, create an audience. And you could name it whatever you want to name it, right? Pleasanton homeowners, right? We wanted to run an ad there, but you would need to go get the list of homeowners and, and maybe you'd talk to your title partner or something like that. But here, if you see, it says, use this format. This is showing you what the spreadsheet needs to look like. And basically they're in column heads and that's the order that it should be. And make sure here it's telling you this has to have at least 1000 leads in it. If you've got in there, but if you got a target list of, let's just say a development, there's only 500 homes, you, that will not work, right? It just, you can upload the list, but Facebook will allow you to use it. I know that some of our clients are out there using companies, I think like Remind, where they're buying a list of all the homeowners. Right. And they are, and, and that might be, I remember this one client has a list. There's three lists of 10,000 people each. And anytime they're running an ad that is relevant for a homeowner, they target all three of those lists. And you want to think about that. If you're really going to have a listing business, you probably want to think about, I want to make sure if I'm running something that's relevant, like an ad on getting your free home value, I wanted to show up to the people who own a home. Creating an audience like this, importing it, it will live in your account. That's exactly what you want to do. Okay. And once you've created that and you say, now I'm going to go to Facebook and I'm going to create maybe a PDF guide ad, and I am going to do divorce and real estate. You could show that just to anybody that lives around you. You can do that. But if you want to target a particular area, instead of typing in the tail, you could say, I want to target those seller leads, that list of, of homeowners that I bought from somebody. And that's how it works. So 
Another thing, and, and you'll notice here that the list I'm using is custom audience from CRM. A, a very, I don't know how long you've been in real estate, but if you're one of these agents with thousands of leads in your CRM, you, I really highly recommend you export them out of your CRM and you go upload them as a custom audience and just call them my old leads, right? A lot of you have paid thousands of dollars for leads from awesome companies like Zillow and Realtor.com. And if they haven't converted into a transaction, I highly recommend that you create a custom audience and just run ads in front of them every once in a while so that you can get a return. So that's the Facebook story. Any, any questions there about Facebook that I haven't answered for you? And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to go over here to the Google site. So I don't see any questions, so let's move on. Oh, one thing I, I should tell you, you can actually see how many leads you're getting. You can see your cost per lead per ad, and you can also see how many people are seeing your ad. And I really want to stress that I'm going to jump out of this camera and jump into an actual live video. If you're new to the industry, and even if you're not new, if you're just a, a realtor, let me refresh this. You, one thing you want to think about in your business is how many people actually know you're a realtor, right? If you, if, if for instance, I live in Lafayette and you go to a search of real estate in Lafayette, or am I going to show up there? Right. Am I going to show up on the internet, on Google? And the answer for most of us is no, absolutely not. Right. Why? Because the big portals are sitting there. Realtor.com, Zillow, they're, they gobble it up because their websites are so big. And you probably, you might have 3000 agents in your area. You might have 20,000 agents in your area. So how do you show up on Google, right? And or, or how do you become relevant in general as a realtor? And the reason why I'm bringing all this up is we've talked a lot about Facebook. And one thing that I think it is really hard to compete with is building your brand. It is very difficult, I think to find a better place in terms of an ROI on money spent where more people are going to see your ad, right? Or see that you are a realtor. And let me explain what I'm saying. If you do, if you mail a letter, maybe you mail postcards, that might be a hundred dollars, maybe 200 bucks, depending on what you're doing. And that's going to get you like a hundred pieces out there. It doesn't mean a hundred people saw it. It just means that's what you spent to get some kind of print thing out there. And maybe 25% of those people actually looked at it, right? And probably a smaller percentage of people held on, right? But here on Facebook, what I want to point out is, look, look this is a live, this is a, a live account. And this is an unusual account. This is a team in the Carolinas. They have agents in both North and South Carolina. And for nearly one year, they've been running ads on their properties and spending a hundred dollars on average, a hundred dollars per listing. So that means they spent nearly $43,000 in 10 months. Their only goal here is to get buyer leads and they have 13,000 buyer leads, right? But the thing I want to point out to you is that in that same amount of time, their business pages have been seen nearly 3 million times. And that's a big deal. If you're running ads consistently on Facebook, you're going to be seen thousands of times every month. Your business page is going to be seen every month. And we have, 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 have clients for many years who have, they usually carry five listings at a time. That's not the typical agent, obviously. But if you are that kind of agent, you should be running ads on your properties consistently every week. And what happens and what's happened for a lot of our clients is they just start getting phone calls out of the blue because people spend time on Facebook, just looking at what their friends are eating, where they're going on vacation and they can't avoid you. They know that you're, that 
as they go here, they see, oh, you've got something, you got an open house. Oh, you sold something. Oh, you just listed something. So that's a very powerful thing about Facebook is building your brand as a realtor can be done, I think, most effectively on Facebook. Not only can you capture leads, but you can build your brand. Okay. So that's my story for, for Facebook. For Google, though, a lot of agents don't know anything at all about Google. They're just starting to learn, I think. But what you should all know is Google is the number one website in the country. And 86% of all questions on the internet begin on this website. And probably a relevant search for people who want listings is how do I sell my home? There are a lot of different search terms what people actually use, right? But if we look at the results here, there is over 800 million results. What you want to realize is if you're anywhere beyond page five, it's not really going to be effective, right? Now, who's up here, but the big heavyweights, right? And they're doing that because they have huge websites. Zillow is on page one because it's huge, right? open door, all these, you know, real kid off phone. Are you going to be able to compete to be competing with national portals? The answer is probably no, but can you sponsor an ad like John here and be on page one of Google? And the answer is yes. How do you do that? First of all, you come here and I'm going to jump out of this account because these guys aren't using our Google stuff. Their goal is strictly to get buyers. There might actually be somebody else on their team that's designed to get seller, but they're not using this. So let's go back to my little agent demo account and go find out where our Google software is. So when we go back to the ads page, the first thing it tells you is connect to Facebook. And once you've done that, there will be a, a button there that says create a, an, an article. I want you to think a little bit about Google, of, it, of how, of what's really going on. So we'll, we'll come back to this page in a minute. So here, back on the ads page, now there's a button that says create Google ad. So as soon as you connect Facebook, this connect Google ad will be there. And if you click on it, you'll see that you can create an IDX ad and that's really for buyers pointing to your website, create a landing page ad and create a PDF guide ad and create a custom ad. I don't recommend anybody does a custom ad because unless you really understand Google and how it works. Okay. The beauty of this part of the system right here is Google is the number one website in the country. And we make it very easy for you to get seller ads out there. Right. And so if you remember what we did it on Facebook, we wanted to create a landing page ad and we wanted to run something at Pleasanton. Right. So it looks the same. It is different. There's different software behind this. You don't need to know that, right? That's not really important. What's important for you is that you can target people who live in that area, right? And now you're targeting not a cool website where people are looking at what friends and family are eating. You're talking about the number one website. And so if I've got a home valuation landing page for Pleasanton and I type in location Pleasanton, I can click here. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to do it. This is the link where we're driving people to. It is my Pleasanton home valuation landing page that I created myself, right? So you can... Click it just to make sure that you're doing that. It's going to be a $50 budget. It's going to run for seven days. So you have a max budget of $350. And all you got to do is click publish. Okay. So to be effective on the number one website in the country is as simple as what I'm showing you here. Go to the landing page section over here, create the landing page that you want, and then go over here on an add on it. So let's talk about cost per lead, right? Remember that whole cost per lead I kept referring to on Facebook. As I mentioned, Google is the number one website in the country. 
And what does that mean to you? The leads cost more, right? Because it's number one and everybody understands that people come here when they have a question and they need help. So if you're going to be an, on this page, it's going to be the highest cost. And the cost is not the same around the country. I know, for instance, that a seller lead in Dallas, Texas cost $30. No, I'm sorry, Houston, $30 each. So if we've got a daily budget of $50, you're only going to get one lead a day, but you're getting leads from a very, from a place that is just a higher quality lead. So you obviously got to think of your budget, right? Of what am I doing here? But it's not unreasonable to have a budget of a thousand dollars a month for Google, knowing that you're getting high quality listing. You want to test this out before you start spending that kind of money, obviously. And running an ad for one a week is a, a good way to get started on testing. And let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Oh yeah, I wanted to show you this. So Google is, it is the number one website in the country. What is the problem? I don't need that. Give me one second. But just in terms of learning, I think. I, I want to share this with you. This article was published last year in 2022 and it gets refreshed. They, they refresh it. I'm going to send it to everybody right now and I'll talk about it now. So it might be blinking in your GoToMeeting chat panel. And I definitely recommend that you look at this if you're thinking about Google and here's what it is. These are the search keywords that people are typing in. If you scroll down, um, they have all the buyer keywords. So this is, these are the top searches on Google that people are using. These are the terms that people are using, right? So this is good for you to understand. Maybe if you write things, you might want to incorporate these words because these are what people are typing. If you're not interested in buyers and you're more interested in sellers, just keep scrolling down. Because these are the words that home owners are using on Google. And if you're going to go and run ads on Google yourself, make sure you're checking this out. Now, the nice thing about our platform is if you're using our software, we are already embedding those keywords. So you don't actually have to do that. If you go do this by hand on Google, it is an ugly process. It is not easy. And you will have to have all the keywords that you want in there. You will also have to write your own headlines and those headlines are relevant to the blue text up here. And you'll also have to write your own descriptions and we do that all for you. So we make it very easy for you to be effective on Google, right? That's really the point of that. Again, you can run ads on landing pages. You can run ads on PDF guides. And I recommend that you're doing that trying to get listing leads. I don't recommend it so much for trying to get buyers because they are more expensive. And as I mentioned and repeated earlier, it's very easy to get lit buyer leads on Facebook. So why spend a ton of money on Google if you're already, if you know that there's an easy way that works. So I will point this out going along that line. We say create an IDX. And we do this, it's weird, but if this home is in Sacramento, so if I click create an ad, it's odd that we do it this way, but this is just, if you're trying to create an ad for Sacramento and so it's choosing the, the city where the city is. And now we need to get a link, right? And you probably want to get a link from your website. And I would only recommend doing this if you've got a powerful website that can convert traffic to a lead. Okay. There are a lot of websites out there that really are not designed to do that very well. But I think most of you heard of Boomtown, right? Boomtown is a super expensive website. It looks cool. But the cool thing about it really is that one out of 10 people who land on that website, sign up and become a buyer lead, right? So if you've got a website, it doesn't have to be 
they're not going to be boom town. And there are a lot of websites that will force registration after I've looked at three or four properties or I'm on it for two minutes or whatever. And if you got a website that can do that, you might want to do, that. you can do that. again, that's driving people to your website and maybe there's a value for you, right? Maybe you've done a ton of investment and you want people to get there and you know that you can get buyer leads on it. So maybe there's a value for you, there. but just to be repetitive. If you're looking for buyer leads, the fastest, cheapest way is fair. let's see, have I missed anything? Are there any questions from, for anyone here regarding this? I think, let's see, create Google ad. We can do landing pages, which we know we can do buyer guides. I will say this. I think landing pages, especially for new construction can be also very effective in, in my area, there are a handful of major developments going on, right? Uh, yeah, like thousands of homes are being built and they have their own signs. They have their own, how do you say, marketing going after. So if you live in the area, you know that this is happening, right? And let's just say that there's one Maramont development. You could actually create a Maramont landing page and have that page reflect and discuss what's happening over there. And then you can say, well, everybody that lives in this area to see that. And it can work for you because you know that people are getting familiar with that. And if they go, I'm just curious, I'm going to go to Google and go find out more about it. And then your landing page pops up when you capture the lead information, et cetera, et cetera. So that can be very effective as, as well. Now, a moment ago, I said, I don't recommend creating a custom Google ad. And I'm going to show you why. Let me ask a question here real quickly. Who here has run an ad on Google? Any of you have, have you run an ad on Google? And the reason why I don't recommend that you do this is everything that we do automatically is blank. So you're really going to have to understand what is going to work on Google. It's not incredibly difficult. But it's something that most agents don't know. And that's why it's so smart to just, just subscribe to our Google software, which costs 30 bucks a month, because we're doing everything automatically for you. All you got to do is decide what tool do I want to use and what area am I going to target and publish. But when you're doing something custom like this, you got to do this all free for me. And of course you don't need our software to go right and out on Google. You can go straight to your Google ad account. And let me tell you that but it's I is a lot more ugly and difficult to understand than the one page you're looking at right here. I'm not trying to force you to sign up for, for our Google software. I am, however, saying that it is the number one website in the country. And if you want listings, you should have Google somewhere in your business strategy. That's my story for today. Any questions while we're waiting on that answer? I want to point out that we always record these calls. And they are always on our YouTube channel under videos. And I definitely recommend that if you want to learn more about Facebook and Google, you can see all these, they're all in order. There's, I know there's hundreds of videos here and that kind of freaks people out, but the most current ones are at the top. If you want more listings, I highly recommend you check out a few of the top tools and more listings calls. If you're new to us or you want to make sure you got all things going right check out our get started call. And of course, if you want to know about Facebook and Google, you can always see what's going on here. There are things that are different that change that we're adding. And so I talk about those. And, and so if you look at the, the text underneath it, here's a multi-channel strategy. That's the topic that I'm focused on in that particular call. So there over here, I'm talking about monthly ad budgets. When I go in discussion, what should you really think about uh, in terms of and I will say this is since I just mentioned it, a lot of people ask me how much should they spend on that? And they used to just ask me this question regarding Facebook only because we didn't even have Google ad software. And if I was talking to a brand new green agent with no business and no, no name recognition, I would tell an agent run $200 a month on Facebook. 
do a, a one ad for $50 a week or run two ads for $25 each. You're spending 50 bucks a week. That's 200 bucks a month. Depending on what kind of ad you're running, you're going to end up with maybe 50 to a hundred leads, right? Also, you as an agent are going to start to be seen thousands of times every month. And that's where I was mentioning earlier, you can build your brand and let people know that you're a realtor. So that's like my minimum ad budget for any, what I would call a green agent. You have nothing going on. You're new. You got your license. You want to just start building business. That's what I would tell them, right? If you're an agent who's been in the business for a while and carries one or two listings, you probably need a budget of three to 400 a month on Facebook because you're going to market your listings a little bit more and you're going to run ads to get more listings, right? You're going to run sold ads and that's going to cost more. So that's like a Facebook ad budget, right? Speed of 400. If you're somebody operating with five plus listings, I highly recommend you have a larger budget closer to five a month. The Google question is a totally different thing and a lot, and it depends on how long you've been in the business and your understanding of the value of listings to your business. And that can easily be a budget of 500 to a thousand dollars a month, even a couple thousand a month. Certainly there are agents that are spending that on Google. We just make it incredibly easy for them to do. Because the one thing about Google is a lot of agents don't know what it is and how to manage it. So they waste a lot of money with companies who are running ads for them. And that's understandable that I've been in Google to run it. It's a hideous platform. And so you need to pay somebody like hundreds of dollars a month just to run the ad. Or you can pay us 30 bucks a month and you can run your ads quite easily. So that's the story. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I know we have another class on Monday. If uh, you haven't seen it before, you can sign up for all of our classes on leadgenwebinar.com. What are we talking about on Monday? Get started. Yeah. Let's see if there are any questions here. Can you run ads on other age of listings if you're, yes, Lindsay, I mentioned that earlier. That is definitely something that I highly recommend. If you are holding an open house for another agent, so the listing is, it's already in the system or, and, or maybe they're not even using listings to leads. It doesn't matter. You can come here and click this button that says add listing, then grab listing, drop in the zip code and the MLS ID for that property and grab it. Then that listing will sit right here in this list. And then you can say, oh, I want to market the listing. And when you do that and you click on Facebook and Instagram ads, the, the whole ad is written and you're going to get leads. I'll give it a second bullet. It will be sponsored by your business page on Facebook. All you got to do is click create an ad. And it will say there's an open house and click here for details. So that's how you would do it. Let's see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you next week. I don't see any other questions. So have a great weekend and let us know if we can help you. I do want to, I, I didn't mention it. We got a great support team down here on the bottom left. If you put your questions in this box, everybody sees it. They're going to respond to you super fast. So thanks everybody. Thanks for joining me and take care.